Good morning, my friends. I'm feeling good today. Today is Thursday, it's early in the morning. It's about 7.30 a.m. I'm just on my way to get my load that I was supposed to get loaded yesterday afternoon. But it's getting loaded this morning instead. That's the way it is, it's not that bad. It could be worse. And there's a silver lining. I got a nice warm night where I didn't have to idle the truck. <laughs> well, I got to save money and fuel. Uh, I just gotta go just down the road and uh, check in there. And then once they're ready for me, they call me into the yard. It doesn't take too long to load me. It's just I have to tarp it afterwards. And I can't tarp it in their yard. For insurance reasons. Ah, right? I don't know of any other company that ships product that has to be tarped, but doesn't provide a tarping station. Or a tarping area. None. You cannot tarp your load in their yard. I tried it once. They got really mad. No tarping on their property. So what they want you to do, and what I end up doing is going onto the road and parking on the side of a road like an industrial street and tarping it there. I know, right? Whatever. I'm not complaining. I'm just pointing out that that's really odd in my opinion. Oh no, and this traffic. Oh man. I'm just coming over the Trans Canada right now. I'm gonna be merging onto this highway that's underneath me right now. And it's busy. Oh, bumper to bumper. No, 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 no. No, I can't be late. So weasel. Oh man, are you excited for a new day or what? You excited? I, I'm very excited. Thank you for asking. You have a good sleep? Hey. You'll have to speak into my good ear, man. The old man, did you get a good sleep? I I, I slept quite well, thank you. You had your truck a little bit hot though. Could have cooled it off a bit. I was a little warm. One second, you find people. You find people. Let me set you up here. There you go. There you go. See? Good people. Now you're all ready to go. <laughs> okay. We're in Revelstoke, British Columbia today. Didn't make it too far yesterday. Uh, yesterday, all we did was uh, spend all day loading this load I got behind us and tarping it and then didn't get too far but today we're gonna get as far as we can we have about 1800 kilometers left to go just over a thousand miles I mean, 1200 miles or so to go to get home I want to get home tomorrow apparently we got lots of snow at home so we got some snow clearing to do uh, we have a guy that comes and uh, clears our yard but it's sort of like his side gig I think so he can't always come right after the snowfall so I, I just messaged him and asked him if he's coming out or not and he says probably this weekend so hopefully he'll get there before I get there, or I'm gonna get stuck in the yard apparently. And apparently we got like three feet of snow on our driveway again. But if he's not, that's fine, that's cool. That's why I have a snowblower. It just takes me like two hours to do with the snowblower and takes him literally less than 15 minutes to do with his fancy little skid steer. Man, would I love to have one of those. Less than 15 minutes, it was, I think it was like 12 minutes and he had the whole yard cleared. With my snowblower, the last time I did it, it was over two hours. Over, was it two and a half? Two? No. Still. Wow. The difference a machine makes, right? Okay, so let's get out there. Let's walk the weasel and then let's get on the road. I want to get home tomorrow for around supper time. The store's been giving me problems lately. It doesn't want to let me out. I guess my truck really likes me. Alright, so here we are. Uh, parked in this little, uh, little area right here 
Time to get ready to get out there with all these fine people who are probably going extremely excessively slow. That's okay, I guess that's better than going extremely excessively fast. I want a snowmobile. This is snowmobile country. There's a big uh, resort just off here. Uh, snowmobile resort. And with all the snow we've gotten, it'd be a big hit right now. So this is my load here. All wrapped up like a nice birthday present again. It's right to the end of the trailer. I'll have to show you on the other side. Whew. What did they see? All these guys with the sleds, they're going in there. Up at the top of that mountain. It's Mount Revelstoke, I think. There's a huge snowmobile resort. I would love to be able to go up there and have fun with everybody. But somebody's got to do this. It's a pretty slippery road out here. The next town we go through is Golden, and that's where I'm gonna stop for my coffee. Coffee numero uno of the day, so I'm not exactly in my right mind just yet. But I am of enough coherence to know that this road is slippery, we gotta be careful. There, There is salt on it, so I mean, it's not a sheet of ice. It's just a little slippery, you know, a little bit. Not too bad. I got pretty good weight on my truck behind me. I've got about uh, 12,000 kilograms on my drives and 13,000 on my trailer. So I would like there to be more weight on my drives than my trailer, but when you're hauling a flatbed, sometimes you just don't have a choice. You just load it how it works, as long as it's legal. <laughs> but that is some advice I can give you guys. Always try and make sure that you have more weight on your truck. You always want to carry the weight. You don't want to pull it, especially up the mountains here. My dad reminded me of that again uh, yesterday when I was talking to him. He was He's uh, hauling dry vans and the people who loaded his trailer put all the weight at the back of his trailer. So he had a lot of weight on the back, but not so much on the front. And uh, he didn't like that because you just spin out on the hills then very easily. Because you're pulling all this weight up and you got no traction. So. He had to adjust it and adjust his, uh, he can slide his axles. I can't do that on my flatbed. He had to slide his axles and stuff to push the weight forward. And after that, I think he, uh, he said it was still slippery, but he had better traction. In about three and a half to four hours, we'll be meandering our way around Calgary. Tonight, I want to get to uh, past Swift Current. Like, if I get to Moose Jaw, that would be great. In Saskatchewan we'll see I'm not too sure how far I can get but we'll definitely get the swift current Expected. We're on the other side of the Rockies now and temperatures have plummeted. Sitting at minus 20 right now. Going around the north side of Calgary. It seems this cold weather has been messing with a few people's heads and uh, they have lost the ability to drive and maintain a speed. 1.7 kilometers. Keep left onto Highway 201 East. In all honesty, it's probably because you're not supposed to use your cruise control in the winter time, and some people take that very seriously and uh, can't maintain speed with their foot on the pedal. We're doing all right right now, though. That was just before when traffic was a little heavier, and it seemed like everybody who wanted to go slow was in the left two lanes. Interesting how that happens. 
That's what happens when you get so used to driving through the countryside and suddenly you have to drive around a big city. You get all the city drivers, right? They don't understand highway travel. They're the kind of people that, you know, they get on the highway and they think because there's no street lights, they gotta use their high beams. I've actually heard that excuse more than once. More than one person has defended using their high beams on the highway in traffic by saying, oh, well, that's just the way you do it. When there's no street lights, that's what your high beams are for. You turn them on when the street lights go away, when you go outside the city. Continue 2.2 .2 kilometers, then keep left onto Highway 201 East. Yep, those are the kind of people that maybe they should just stay in the city, you know? No? No? Maybe not? Why are you talking so much? Really? How many times has she told me to do that now? Four? Five? You guys been counting? She's gonna talk to me again, isn't she? I know what to do. I need a new GPS. I'm saving up for one. I'm in Brooks, Alberta. An hour or two west, no pardon me, east of Calgary. And I'm gonna fuel up here at their Flying J. Got about a quarter tank left and I don't want it to go any emptier than this. When possible, take a U-turn, then turn left. No, I'm gonna go fuel. So I gotta put some anti-gel in the fuel this time because uh, we're going into weather that's supposed to go down below minus 30 again. We're almost out of this season though. You know, the first two weeks of February, maybe the third week of February. After that, it starts to get warmer again. It does this every year, so we're almost out of it. A little while longer. So this is more of like a card lock than a... You know, we can fuel over here on the left too. People don't usually realize that. There's just no satellite pump if you do it this way. You gotta string it across, but it still does work to fuel here. See, it's this pump right on the end here. It's got that longer hose. There we go. Well, the sun is staying in the sky a little longer already. It's time now. Time is six o'clock here, and look at this. Still got light in the sky. Not bad. So we're just leaving the Brooks Flying J now. You knew that because I just told you we were just arriving. I'm a little tired. No, I don't feel tired today. I'm a little, uh, I don't know. Feeling quiet, not as talkative today. Turn left on College Drive East. And I got. Turn left. I got the anti-gel in my fuel now, and we'll have Turn to stop. Turn left Castles Road East, then take right ahead. Right, right or left. I'll stop and pick up some more of that very soon. But at least for now, we're set. We bought 550 liters of diesel fuel. Cost uh, about 650, 660 dollars, somewhere in there. I don't know the exact amount. I didn't look. Doesn't always matter to me the exact amount because either way I've got to pay for it. I don't really have a choice. Freight needs to be delivered and I need to put the diesel fuel in there one way or the other. It doesn't really matter. No, lower numbers do grab my attention. It's a lot cheaper here than out in BC. BC diesel fuel was what, $1.30, $1.40 a liter? Take ramp on right to Highway 1 East. Out here on the prairies, I think I paid a dollar eighteen per liter here. It's still pretty expensive. I mean, in Manitoba right now, gasoline is selling for about eighty-seven cents a liter. I think diesel is about ninety something cents, ninety-three cents a liter. But that's still expensive, if you ask me. Because when I grew up, I can still remember gasoline selling for thirty cents a liter. And I'm sure people who are a little older than me remember it selling for even cheaper than that. I mean, just imagine how much cheaper everything in your life would be if it only cost me a quarter as much to get your stuff to you. Imagine all the money you would save. 
Like right now, I'm uh, delivering insulation for a commercial building product uh, project in Manitoba. 560 kilometers on Highway 1 East. And it costs a certain amount for us to get the freight from BC out to Manitoba for them, right? Costs probably what, a little over a thousand dollars in fuel. Now imagine if it only costed me four or five hundred dollars of fuel. Then I don't need to charge them so much. And then their building costs half as much to build. And it goes right down to the groceries on the shelf, the gasoline in your fuel tank. Imagine if everything was just cheaper to get to you, how much you would save. But a lot of people don't understand that factor of it. And they think that higher prices, I'm referring to the carbon tax right now, they think making fuel more expensive will make things better. I'm sorry, you're wrong. <laughs> It'll only make everything in your personal life more expensive. You get where I'm coming from? I know most of you get where I'm coming from because a lot of you uh, have something to do with trucking. You know, that's why you're on this channel or maybe you're interested in it or you've heard my rants before. But what do I know, right? I'm just a lowly peasant truck driver. What do I know? All I know is what would make it a lot cheaper. But no, no, that's, that's silly. Don't listen to the silly truckers. No, let's raise the prices of everything. Make everything more expensive. That'll save the planet. We are at the end of a long and somewhat boring day, but it was a day. Six hundred and fifty meters. No. Then take ramp to Highway One East. No. I'm my own man. I'll do my own thing. Thank you. We're here at the Husky in Swift Current, Saskatchewan. This is where I'm going to spend the night. If I can find a good parking spot here, it's just off to the right. Nice, quiet place to spend the night. We're about nine hours from home, or from the yard anyways. We'll do that tomorrow, we'll get going early in the morning. <laughs> there it is. I'm a little tired and it's time to go to sleep. All right, we just gotta find a parking spot here. But there's plenty in the back. I wonder where would be the quietest place. There's a reefer over there, so no thank you. But I think I can park all the way on the edge. To the left. This guy left his lights on. Oh, it's just his running lights. I'm always surprised when I see guys who uh, leave their headlights on overnight, you know? Like, did you not see that? here and we're gonna back up against the edge over here actually you know what no I could park here too so I know this vlog was sort of two days condensed into one shorter vlog didn't do much talking but hope you guys enjoyed the ride anyways tomorrow is the ride home we're getting home tomorrow so you know what that means non-stop only only Ne stops of necessity. What was it? What was I gonna say? Only, only stops that are absolutely necessary. There's a word I was looking for there. But I need to get to sleep anyways because I don't have lots of energy. I don't have energy when I get home tomorrow yet, and I want to enjoy my time there because, like usual, it's going to go by too quickly, and we'll be back on the road before we know it. Right now, we have plans for uh, arriving home tomorrow, uh, which is Saturday when I'm. Today's Friday when I'm filming this and then uh, Saturday no Sunday my parents are coming over for supper and Monday I've got to deliver this load into Portage La Prairie and then Tuesday this truck is getting serviced and then Wednesday it's back to work but who knows maybe they won't have anything for me and I'll get an extra day at home I wouldn't fight that we'll see I need to get back to work but at the same time it'd be nice to have that extra day We'll see what happens. Uh, I'll have a new video for you tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my links down below in the description if you want to follow me on social media or if you want to find Britt, my wife, on social media as well. Her YouTube channel and everything you need to know is down there. I'll see you later. I'm going to bed.